Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Fish Number West. I'm your host, John B. And today I'm going to be talking about the part four of the boat restoration. As you may be able to tell, the boat is really starting to take shape here. Now, uh, last video, Pat and I worked on the deck and we were starting to design them out a little bit. And Pat put on the transom mount for if we were going to put on a, uh, you know, another electrical motor. But today I've kind of took another step forward, so I decided to turn on the camera and start videotaping. I want to start off right here by the uh, motor. You know, I talked about the motor yesterday, but it wasn't on the boat, it wasn't really on there. So, what you may be able to tell is we took the motor and we put it on the deck right here. But before we put it on the deck, we actually found two pieces of wood and we stacked them up, to, up on top of each other until it was level to the lip of the boat. And I talked about it yesterday and how it's important that you do that, otherwise, your motor won't go up and over and it won't lock. And as you can see, it's up right here. Locks into place and it goes right over the lip. And you've got about a solid inch of clearance too. You always want a little bit of clearance, not too high, but never too low because you know, you put it too low, then you have to unscrew it and put another piece of wood on there. But that's just about good. That's about what you wanted um, on any bass boat or John boat or anything like that. And make sure you have enough room for steering. And so that motor's gonna move around, it's not gonna side of the boat you make sure it's out and up because if it's too close it's going to grind up against the aluminum or fiberglass whatever the boat you've got. So the installation is fairly simple straightforward. You've got um, six screws in this, four up here and uh, two up here and it's built in really good. The uh, actual motor isn't on the deck. What we've done here is we've um, screwed in this to the deck. We've screwed in that to this and it's just kind of a building block effect and afterwards we screwed this into, into these two main blocks right here. But what's actually in the deck is just this piece of wood right here. It's extremely sturdy. Uh, another additive that I put on here is I took out the old cleat. Here's what the old one looked like. Right here, as you may be able to tell, it was time to get a new one. And uh, the new one was just all corroded and rusted over. so. We didn't need that. So I got a new one right here. It's a little bit more spacey. And I like the location of that. It's on the outside of the boat. So if I bump up to it, up against anything, it's not going to get down through anything like that. But I put it on the inside. And this uh, little cleat's going to allow me to tie up the docks, um, put an anchor on there, anything like that. It's a very useful thing if you're on a John boat. Always have cleats one to two to three. Perfect amount. So moving on from that, I've added on to the deck. deck. I've actually cut it off. No more deck. This is the last piece right here. And I wanted to build a console to my boat just so I could put somewhere I could put the hummingbird at, somewhere I could put maybe some compartments. I may cut out an area where I might put some compartments. Um, I might add a few other things here. We'll see what the, uh, the boat entails. But I want to talk about the wiring and, and how, I, how I put this deck on here. Now, I'm not done screwing in all the screws this deck. We've got one right here and one right here. Nothing is screwed into the bottom, but it's really secure. And this is actually screwed in to this right here. And uh, I ended up taking a separate piece and putting it right on top in between these two. So this is a separate piece um, to these two. So you've got a screw on top of here, a screw on top of here, and two screws going in. And it makes it look a little bit nicer and uh, keeps things from rolling off the boat. So having like a crank thing like that and wind or the speed of the boat knocks something off, won't knock it off. You've got this, this lip right here. And it's just, it looks nice, you know. It, it's, a, it's a real cool look to the boat. But um, it was a really easy way to put it in. It's probably one of the hardest things to do, and it was fairly easy in general. So um, I like that a lot. It's like a little console in my job. But I just really like that design when we put it in. So on the console, we've got my corner TX Hummingbird, which I bought a while back, and never thought I was going to be able to put on the Jumbo, but I, it's finally on here. We've got the mount on here, and it's removable, obviously. So I'm be able to take this off and put it in your car when you're not using it. But it's a nice little unit. I'm going to show you how it works here in a little bit. But the actual thing is, the actual thing, the hummingbird is mounted to this. And then we've got all the wiring here. I've actually taken some of the wire and put it up under the deck so it looks a little bit nicer. And uh, we've got all the wires right here. So right now I'm going to talk about the wiring and how I did it all. I don't know a whole lot about wiring. I didn't have any previous knowledge besides some tricks and tips my grandfather's taught me. He's a really handy guy. so. Pretty much everything I've done right here, he's kind of taught me and kind of got me started into. 
But the wiring wasn't too hard. I just went to Home Depot. I picked up a few necessities for wiring and, and electrical appliances. And all I really needed was just um, some electrical tape. I needed, I don't even know what they're called. They're, they're pretty much the connectors. Two things you can crimp together to meet two wires. That looks pretty ugly. I'm, I'm probably look pretty awful to most people who know how to properly um, apply two electrical cords. But it looks really ugly right now. And it, and it works though. And I'm not, this isn't a co cosmetic project. This is a fishing project and something I can get the, get the boat up and running. But anyways, it, was, it took no time at all. I took 10 minutes and I cut out two little holes back here where I could slide the wires through. The transducer wire wires right here. The main battery wire which connects to the back battery console is right here. The Hummingbird 400TX wire is right there and the Troy motor battery is right there. And these two wires are actually woven together and they're plugged in right here. And the deucer battery is not, or the deucer cord isn't connected to the battery at all. That's a separate thing. And right now we're going to turn on 400TX to show you. I'll do a re review on this later. Uh, but right now I just want to show you how it works and uh, how it will look when I'm out in the water. So I'm just going to put it on a uh, simulator. And I'm going to do it on down imaging. And we'll put the light on. And this is really cool because it was like one of the only ones on eBay that had a backlight to it. Had side and down imaging as well. And um, it's a great little unit. I would have liked color, but again, it doesn't really matter. It works. I'm not getting, you know, a, a big Lorenz unit. I'm just going to get something small for the John Boat. This was actually more expensive than the John Boat, ironically enough. But, uh, anyways, that's all hooked up. The motor's all hooked up. You may be able to hear it. And I know I said in the last video it's a four speed, it's actually a five speed trolling motor, um, 51 pound thrust, or 41 pound thrust, which you guys may know. Um, so that's the wiring, and the wiring will actually be tucked up under these, uh, these aluminum flats right here, and the battery will have its own little console and seat. Uh, that's about it for now. I mean, I'm, I'm probably going to put two more supporters in between these beams right here. I need to rip out this beam because it's just completely messed up. It's useless. This little beam right here is just toast. So um, this one and this one are actually already applied in there. They're already built in. But this one needs to be drilled in and this one right here. And I'm not sure if I'm going to put that there um, for now. I don't know. I'm still figuring it out. And eventually what I would like to do is somehow try to rip out this seat or put this seat right here, but I want to incorporate this seat uh, that my grandfather gave me into the boat just because it's going to be kind of hard to stand up and use this uh, this foot pedal on such a wobbly boat. This boat is extremely wobbly and flimsy, but hopefully once I get some more foundation built, it won't do that as much. But uh, that's about it. I know I talked a lot and I know I did a lot of um, showing us some new stuff, but I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and uh, maybe in the next episode I'll do a step-by-step -step on how I do this. Thanks for watching, and uh, catch you guys.